This tutorial is about complex articulation. I'm going to look at this book, Mummy, by Matthew Reinhardt, and there's one figure in it, this extraordinary lady. I'd say it's a masterpiece, really. It's a really delightful little piece of design with this articulated figure. So I'm just going to deconstruct that and show you how to make it. This was my first attempt at deconstructing it and putting all the pieces together. So I've made all the different individual parts of it in different colours and then I've put notes all the way around the edge to myself. It's fairly crude but it does all work. This is my second attempt. So this is the one I'm going to be showing you how to make. This just has all the pieces put together. It's articulating nicely. They're all moving in a satisfactory way. You can see how the arms are moving, the knee is bending, the head is moving forward. They're all articulating in a nice way. I'm going to show you how to make this and then I'll show you how Matthew Reinhardt has adapted it to make it into a finished design. This is the base sheet and I've just marked where these pink pieces stick on. There's two of these asymmetric v-folds that are covered in Tutorial 29. It's a way of getting a plane to lift up at right angles to the spine. So there's two of these and then the, the yellow piece, which is the main body of the figure, that will be lifted up on those so it'll move like that. And in between them there's just a pretty straightforward piece. It forms a parallelogram with the others and it's got these double triangles folded in. This is the moving arm technique which is tutorial 15. So it's the the moving arms is what moves these two arms there. Then the other mechanism we're using is this. This is hubs and pivots tutorial 27. And then lastly the way this moving arm comes up through the body of the figure that's covered in the, the running figure tutorial which is tutorial 57. So now I'll just stick them all together so you can see how it works. The first one is this piece. It's going to rise 2.5, 2.5 centimetres above the page and then it's got one double triangle. This is what's going to move the head. And so I'll just crease those creases. The bottom edge is 6 centimetres long. It's 2.5 centimetres high. There's a 45 degree fold here and a 90 degree fold there. And so this one is going to stick down like that on the very top. That's the first piece that you stick on. I'll just make sure that is working nicely before we glue it down. In essence, this is a counterfold, the moving arm technique. So I'll put the glue on there. And this kind of V-fold, when the base is open, the whole thing lies flat. You can stick it down both pieces at the same time. So it'll be like that. And then, as always, you just check it and make sure you close the page. Make sure that it folds all right, that everything's happy. There you go. So that's the first one. And you can stick the second one on. This is quite important. This is going to be moving the, the moving arms and they move in different ways. So you have to make sure that the bottom crease is a valley fold and the top piece is a mountain fold. When I was making this dummy I actually got it wrong. I made this into a mountain fold and so then when I was sticking the arm on the arm wasn't moving in the right direction. There's all these quirky little details around pop-up that um, can trip you up quite easily. Making these things and experimenting and doing actually making the thing gets you au fait with the different way these things work. So you can see when it's a mountain fold, these two triangles are folding backwards. So they'll give you one type of movement. When it's a valley fold, it's coming forward. So that'll give you a different kind of movement. It's very easy to slip up the way I first did. I had them both as valley folds. So they were both folding in like that. And so it wasn't giving me the right movement. And I couldn't work it out. Anyway, I finally got there, worked it out. On this, you can see the triangles that I've shaded. Those are the ones that the arms are going to stick onto. 
and again the whole thing is two and a half centimeters high four centimeters wide so these these three pink pieces they all stick their left hand edge is six centimeters from the spine and they're all two and a half centimeters apart so now I'll stick this middle piece on like this so the the piece that sticks to this line that I've marked it's the crease that sticks it's not the edge of the card so I'll just put some glue on that one and stick the the crease down onto that mark I've made and you can see the edge of the card is on that six centimeters from the edge line and then the last one so this is the piece that's supporting the body if we look at it it's it's supporting the yellow piece probably the best way to look at it is like that so you can see this is the piece that's moving the head as you move it you can see the head moves this last piece is the piece that supports the body which helps this leg movement to work and then the small piece the middle piece that's the one that moves the arms as you open and close it so I'll just stick this last piece on again it's six centimeters along the bottom the crease that sticks to the line two and a half centimeters high the angles 45 degrees 90 degrees and in fact once you've stuck it down the angle between the crease on the small side and the spine that'll be 45 degrees as well so I'll just stick that on make all these creases good and stick that down close it to make sure everything's folding down nicely I did have to trim these slightly once I'd made this and you start opening and closing it I could see that various pieces start clashing so this bottom one I've had to trim the small side down a bit so that it doesn't clash with the body but we'll have a look at that in a mo. this small green piece this is it's like the neck this is what attaches the head onto the top pink piece and I just check here what angle I had it coming off the pink piece and it, it glues on it's going to be flat against that flat edge there so it comes up like that and then I'm not sure I actually got that fold right but we'll sort that out in a minute so you put a little bit of glue on there and stick that on so that's sticking on like that but it will actually when it comes into play it'll be bending back more like that I think I think, I think the head will attach with it bent up at more of an angle like that then the second piece is this is the arm piece I've cut it to an angle that will stick onto this little triangle there I'm going to stick it onto this little piece here so I'll just, I'll just hold it up so you can see where that orange piece is stuck on and then the last one comes up let me just see what angle I stuck that on at that, that's coming off this triangle like that coming off towards the hypotenuse I'm not quite happy with it being square so I'll trim that down so it'll fit onto that small shaded triangle better I'll put some glue on that one now now we're ready to stick the body on so the body sticks onto these top three flaps so I'm going to put glue on all of them and stick the whole thing down at once that arm has to come up through this the head has to come through that little piece there I think that's all right when the base is flat everything should be flat stick that down 
Let's just check how it goes when you close it. So now you can see how it's moving. You can see there's some um, this piece where that edge isn't quite happy against that. So I'm just going to trim that down a bit. Yeah, it's still this, this corner here. I'm going to trim that off as well. Yeah, now you can see it. it's working as it should. There's still something crunching. It's still this corner here that something not quite right there. If I just try trimming it off with the craft knife, just cut it back a little bit. Right, now it's good, thank goodness. So although it was a small hitch, it was just this tiny little piece that was catching, it actually meant the whole thing wouldn't shut. And so yes, a small problem can have a big impact. Now yeah, I've cut that away, so now it does seem to be moving pretty nicely. First we can add the arms to make them a bit more interesting. So this one I've made coming up like that. I should have two of these pieces, yeah, so let's just Say so that goes like that, trim it down a little bit or maybe stick it on first and then see how long we want it to be. So one arm goes on there, the other arm comes on here. You can have it whatever angle you like. Let's give it a slight angle. So maybe, no, I think that'll be all right. Let's just put the glue on the end of that piece and stick it on there. Now you can see this again, because I didn't trim that down, it's going to clash with that yellow corner. I just cut a little tiny bit off that elbow corner really. As you see, as it closes, it gets very close to the yellow. So I had to take that off so that piece wasn't clashing. The foot comes down here and it, it just glues at one end. So like the toe ends, that's going to go there. So this is the white piece on the leg, it goes here. So it's going to go through like this. You want the little, the waist to be as close as possible to the diameter of the hole so that when it's moving it doesn't drift. So the, the less drift you have, the more movement you have. But you have to have a bit that's quite fat, that's above the hole to stop it sliding down. And then it has to widen out again below the hole so it doesn't ride up. And so to put this in place, you just fold these two pieces, stick it down through there. You don't crease them really well because once it's through, you unfold them underneath again. And so that piece is just locked into position now. And then the, the red piece, I've made this slightly different for summary. Rather than having it curved shapes, I've just made it all square pieces. The waist here has to be quite close to the size of the hole in the white piece and also quite close to the hole in the red piece. I think maybe that would be better. Yeah, so again, you just fold these over very lightly. You don't crease those tabs thoroughly. You just fold them enough so they'll go through the hole, push it through. And then these two fold through and go down through the orange hole and unfold again and with any luck that let's just see what's happening here just not quite as good as I would have hoped it was um, no this isn't it might might be better if it went the other way actually and it went came up through the hole, which is what I'd done on one of the other experiments. So let's try that. Yeah, that's kind of better. I, th I think if these, if these bits were just slightly longer, so it doesn't pull the shoe up so much, it might, might work a little bit better. And then I'll just glue the last piece was this head piece. I'll glue that on. As it opens you see the head rocks forward. When you stick it on you want to allow for it going backwards as it closes. I'm going to stick it on something like that so it can rock forward.
the glue had oozed, always a bad result, so it was sticking it to the body. So now we've got much better movement on that. So yeah, another thing to always look out for is where the glue's oozed, that, that can cause problems. So now this is the underlying structure. I'm not happy with that, but if we look at how Matthew Reinhardt has worked on this model, the sophisticated version. So here it is. The white bit actually has this skirt attached. So maybe I'll just attach a skirt piece to that. So I think by attaching that to there, sticking it onto the white, it'll help to keep the white flat and stop it jutting up the way it does. So we put a bit of glue on there and stick that onto it. So let's see what that does. So there is some movement, but I've got the lengths not quite right. So ideally it would, maybe if I move it completely flat, actually then you can see we're getting much more movement with that now when it goes right down. The red and that white should definitely be a little bit longer so it's not putting so much pull on this shoe bit. Or maybe if I strengthen the shoe, that would stop it um, jutting up so much. If we look back to Matthew Reinhardt's, he's then got a piece that comes down from the body that's over the top of the skirt there. And he's got a piece that folds round over the top of the arm. So you can't see this hole in the arm there. Because I haven't measured really carefully where this pink piece is and where this edge is, I'm really reluctant to stick another piece on that will overlap the arm because I'm going to have more trouble with that joint. With all this type of thing, you need to make numerous models, numerous dummies, so that you can work out all the dimensions really exactly and make sure that everything moves really smoothly. But we can stick another piece on top of that to cover up over that skirt. So you get the idea of how that's working. If I try cutting a hole in that, that might be enough. So that'll be gluing on here. Just put a little bit of glue on it. Put the arm down through there. Stick it on there. Let's see if that... No, it doesn't like it at all. Try it like that. So you can see I'm trying to stick this piece on but I haven't measured it. I'm just doing it off the cuff and it's really not working. It's too complicated. The way you've got this pink piece underneath, you've got the orange piece coming through the yellow piece. If I'm trying to stick a piece on top of that with the arm coming through and coming down over the top of the skirt I would really need to make a proper dummy and experiment with it and get all the dimensions right get all the pieces lined up right and so just trying to do it off the cuff is just not working so I'll just leave that as it is. The other thing to look at here is on Matthew Reinhardt's this whole beehive hairdo is part of this main body of the dress so that comes up behind the head so it will be coming up behind this blue piece and then it's this piece that's covering the hole in the arm it's actually also part of this piece it's got a fold here the yellow piece would be longer it would have a crease here and come up and over to hide that hole that the arm's coming through it's a really beautiful sophisticated piece of work it is a, it is a masterpiece and it's a bit cheeky of me to try and copy it so um, cavalierly. <laughs> so probably better if I have another look at the, the model I made, which I copied these pieces from. That's this model here. And you can see this was working better before it got, got more complicated with the extra pieces. The shoe bit is quite interesting. The way Matthew Reinhardt has done it, the the way the shoes are made, there's a slit in the page and the toes of the shoes, rather than being stuck on top the way I've done it, they go underneath the joint that I've got 
here that's actually underneath the shoe comes over the top of it so it'll be as though the orange piece comes up over that red and you know maybe that's what I should do so then the the whole thing might hold itself in a better position so this is a really it's a really gorgeous mechanism this I think this is a a minor masterpiece really um, and it yeah it's just part of, I think the whole book is a masterpiece fantastic book Mummy by Matthew Reinhardt.